what it calls the most sweeping reform of food safety laws in over 70 years. The Food and Drug Administration has finalized rules for the Food Safety Modernization Act, or FISMA. Those rules are not yet implemented, but they cover a range of measures for human and animal foods. The FDA says about 3,000 Americans die each year from foodborne illness, and one in six gets sick. Stephen Ostroff is the FDA's Deputy Commissioner for Foods and Veterinary Medicine. He says the U.S. has one of the most diverse food supplies in the world and imports food from more than 200 countries. Ostroff says it's the FDA's responsibility to ensure the safety of both the domestic food supply and that coming in from other nations around the world. Ostroff was in Lincoln last month for the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture's annual meeting. We spoke with him at the event about the importance of the Food Safety Modernization Act. So the Food Safety Modernization Act was something that was passed by Congress in 2010. It was signed into law by the President in 2011. And it's actually the biggest change in food regulation in the United States, or I should say food safety regulation in the United States, probably that will ever occur in any of our lifetimes. And, and it's the biggest change to the way that FDA oversees and regulates food since the 1930s. And it was passed in response to a couple of very, very large and difficult foodborne outbreaks that occurred in the late 2000s. And so it was designed to move the food safety system from always reacting to problems that occur to trying to prevent them from occurring in the first place. And it was also designed to look at all aspects of the food production system from the farm right to the fork. But there are um, a number of different regulations. One of them has to do with what we refer to as preventive controls for human foods. These are for the things that you buy in your grocery store. The second is the same for animal foods, the first time that we've had them in place for animal foods. One is the produce safety rule and to improve the safety of, of things that are grown on the farm, fruits and vegetables grown on the farm. One of them is something called foreign supplier verification because one of the central ideas behind FISMA is that we have to assure that food produced outside of the United States is every bit as safe as food that's produced in the United States and so there has to be equivalency in the quality of the way food is, is produced outside the United States that is imported into the country. And then in addition to that, there's a regulation covering the way that the food is transported from the producer to the consumer called sanitary transportation because you can do everything right on the farm or you can do everything right in the manufacturing plant, but if you contaminate it after it leaves in the truck or the train, then it's all for naught. And then the last one has to do with the topic of food defense. And so to try to prevent malicious or intentional adulteration of foods. And so all that is subsumed under the Food Safety Modernization Act. Can you walk me through what happens when you think there might be a foodborne illness or outbreak or contamination? Yeah, so I, I will say that before I worked at FDA, I worked at our sister agency, the Centers for Disease Control, the group that actually goes out and investigates disease outbreaks. So I've seen it from both sides, um, from, from the standpoint of human illness as well as from the standpoint of food production. And, and so usually what happens is most of the time when there's some thought, some indication that there might be a, a foodborne disease problem, it gets investigated either by folks at the local level or it gets investigated by folks at the state level. Um, they feed information into either the CDC or the FDA about the situation. Um, our job at FDA is to look at the potentially implicated food and to take a look to see if we can piece together all the information from the people who are ill uh, that leads us to some sort of a common food item. And then once we identify what the potential food item may be, we then have to sort of trace it backwards to figure out where it came from and what might be the cause because the one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to say, 
just as an example, it's the salsa, and then pick the wrong item within the salsa that might be the cause of the problem. So all of that has to be traced back and see where it leads to so that we can take some sort of an action that might um, eventually put things to a halt. And one of the tools that allows you to do that quicker or easier is a sequencing aspect? Yeah, so um, most people know that there are certain types of germs that produce foodborne illness. They're familiar with salmonella or they're familiar with E. coli or there, there's, there's a sort of a number of them. Campylobacter is another one that causes human illness. But within the salmonella and the campylobacter, just like people, all of them are slightly different from each other even though they're all sort of in the same family and they're the same salmonella. And so you can do things to actually fingerprint them. Um, how it, what we now do is we now do something called whole genome sequencing, where we actually take the genetic material from the salmonella and we, uh, we look at the entire sequence, all of those letters that you see in the genetic code, and we can determine the exact sequence of that particular organism and we can compare it to other sequences. And so when we had this outbreak last year from ice cream, you may remember that one, where there were relatively small numbers of human cases, by doing something like that, by comparing, and in this case it was listeria, by comparing the listerias through whole genome sequencing that were found in the products and also in the plants, we actually found human cases that had occurred two or three years beforehand. Um, so it's, it's a remarkable tool, and it's remarkably effective. It's still something that's kind of in its infancy in terms of being used, but it will very soon be the standard that we use for foodborne disease investigations.